This is the all-new Subaru Solterra. It's Subaru's first electric car and it could be a major turning point for the brand, especially in the UK and in Europe. In this video, we're going to tell you exactly what it is, we're going to tell you how far it can go on a full charge, and we're going to see whether it should be on your electric car shortlist. But first, if you want to see our review of this car as soon as we've driven it and to see all of our other new car reviews, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And for a great deal on your next car, go to whatcar.com. So first, let's explain a bit about how Toyota has played quite a big part in the existence of the Solterra. Back in 2012, Toyota and Subaru jointly developed the Toyota GT86 and the Subaru BRZ, two sports cars that were basically identical. Then in 2019, the two Japanese manufacturers announced another new joint venture, this time to share resources to develop electric car platforms. The first results of this partnership are the Toyota BZ4X and the Subaru Solterra. Two electric SUVs that will rival other EVs like the VW ID4, Skoda Enyaq and Kia EV6. It's said to be a true 50-50 collaboration with the driving dynamics and chassis done by Subaru and the battery and electric motors taken care of by Toyota. And as you'd guess, the two cars are very similar indeed. In terms of the design, the only real differences to point out are, of course, the badge on the nose of the car, but also the Solterra gets a slightly different front end with a different bumper and different headlights, while at the back of the car, the two cars, again, are very similar. And the main difference in the look is that the Toyota gets a full width light bar. And again, Inside, the Subaru and the Toyota are very, very similar. In fact, the only thing to point out that's different is the badge that you have on the steering wheel. So that means that both cars have the same driving position, the same layout, the same materials in here. And that also means that the driving position itself is something that's kind of new for Subaru and for Toyota. So they've gone for a driving position that puts the driver display above the steering wheel. So in most cars, you look through the steering wheel to see all the driver dials, but now in the Solterra and in the BZ4X, that driver display, which is seven inches and fully digital as standard, is above the steering wheel, which is similar to what you get with Peugeot's iCockpit. Now, we've seen with Peugeot that it took them years to get that driving position right. And even on their latest models, it's still not perfect. And the problem that people have is that depending on where you wanna have your seat and your steering wheel, there's a pretty high chance that the top of the steering wheel here cuts off some of your view of the driver display. So again, with the Solterra, with the BZ4X, that is gonna be something that won't be perfect for everyone. So depending on where you wanna have this set up, you might just be blocking some of your view of that driver display. So just like with any car really, you wanna make sure that you sit in this car and check that the driver display, the driving position works for you before you go ahead and buy it. Now, in terms of the tech that's on offer in the Solterra, it's the same as the BZ4X, where you get this 12.3 inch touchscreen infotainment system. But with the Toyota, on the lower trim levels, you can get a smaller screen. You can't actually get that with the Subaru. You only get this bigger screen as standard, which also gets wireless Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. Now, the screen itself is big, obviously. It's got really nice graphic. It's pretty clear, it's responsive. Some of these icons are a bit small, but on the whole, this is a pretty decent infotainment system with a simple layout. Of course, it would be better if you had more physical controls to help operate it safely while you're driving, but it's good that you do at least have these rocker switches to control the air conditioning. Now, the build quality and the materials in here is the same as it is in the BZ4X, so it feels pretty robust. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart at all, feels solid, well put together, durable, not all of the materials are amazing. So these gloss black plastics look quite nice and this cloth on the dashboard helps lift things a bit as well. You've also got some soft touch materials here as well, but some other plastics like down here on the center console just feel a bit hollow and cheap and scratchy really. You do get quite a lot of storage up front in the Solterra. So you've got this big central armrest here with a removable compartment underneath it and even more space underneath that. In front of there, you've got two cup holders and more storage. Under this, this is where the wireless phone charging is. And then under this floating center console bit, you've got even more storage. And the door bins are a fairly good size as well. But 
it's lucky you do have all this storage because there isn't actually a glove box. Space in the back is really pretty good by electric car standards, so you can see there's absolutely loads of leg room. So even if you're especially tall with very long legs, you'll have no problem whatsoever in that department. There's also a flat floor back here. If you go for the panoramic sunroof, then it does eat into the headroom available, but still, even if you're just under six foot as I am, you can sit up straight and still have a little bit of clearance above your head there. Although we suspect versions without the panoramic sunroof will feel a bit more open. But it's a very wide interior back here and if you're gonna be regularly carrying adults in the back, then this is pretty good and pretty big by electric car standards. Although a Kia EV6, a Skoda Enyaq, they're not exactly small, are they? Now these rear seats, they don't slide, but you can choose to have them in one of two positions to recline them. You can either have them here or very slightly different, a little bit further back. But they only fold down in two chunks, so they split fold 60-40, whereas some other rivals, like the Tesla Model Y, allow you to fold each rear seat down individually, so they fold 40-20-40. You can't get that with the Solterra, and you can't also get a ski hatch either. With the rear seats in place, you get a 452 litre boot with the Solterra. Now, compared to an EV6, that gets 490 litres, and a Skoda Enyaq gets a massive 585 litres of storage in its boot. And also, if you go for the range-topping version of the Solterra, then because you get an upgraded sound system, the subwoofer is in the back and takes up some extra storage space that you'd have on the lower model, which you can see you do get on this side of this upgraded range-topping version that we've got here. So the fact is this car is up against other electric rivals that are a similar size and similar money but have bigger boots. If the Solterra's boot is big enough for you though, then there are good things about it because you get a height adjustable boot floor as standard and you can see in this highest setting here, there's no loading lip at the front. You also have underfloor storage for the charging cables and because it's height adjustable, you can move it down to free up a bit of extra space in the boot, although you can see that it's not the whole of the boot floor that is height adjustable because in the lowest setting there, you're left with a bit of an awkward step right at the back of the boot. Another handy feature though, is the fact that you can take the parcel shelf out and store it in the boot itself. Now let's talk range next, and the Solterra gets a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery, which gives it a claimed WLTP range for the entry level model of 289 miles. Now that isn't terrible, but it also doesn't necessarily stand out compared to the other EVs that this car's up against. And with those WLTP ranges for this car and every other electric car, always remember, you won't actually be able to achieve that figure in genuine real world driving conditions. And the claimed figure for this car also isn't as far as the maximum range available in the BZ4X. Which is partly down to the fact that every version of the Solterra gets an all-wheel drive system as standard. Now, Subaru has a very rich heritage when it comes to all-wheel drive cars. And if the Solterra is anything like its other new products, then it stands a pretty decent chance of being quite good off-road, at least by electric car standards. So, as we've said, every version gets all-wheel drive as standard. You get a 210 millimeter ground clearance. You get hill descent control as standard as well. And there's also an off-road focused driving mode. The maximum charging speed of the Solterra is 150 kilowatts. So if you can find a charger fast enough, you'll get a 20 to 80% charge in 19 minutes. And by the way, the charging port will always be on the driver's side of this car. So we've got a left-hand drive car here. The charging port is on the left-hand side. But if you're in the UK and you buy a right-hand drive version of this car, then the charging port moves over to the right-hand side as well. But how much does the Solterra cost? Well, depending on spec, you will pay £49,995 or £52,995. By comparison, the BZ4X starts around £42,000 and tops out at £51,000. The reason the Toyota has a much lower starting price is because you can get a version of that car with two-wheel drive, whereas you'll only get a Solterra with all-wheel drive. Subaru explained that it sees Toyota catering for the lower end of the market, with the Solterra aiming for sales at the high-spec top end. But that is some pretty punchy pricing, which is above even the most expensive version of the Enyaq, 
and a GT Line S version of the EV6 is only a little more money. You do get a lot of equipment as standard though, so that includes heated front seats, heated rear seats, a heated steering wheel, heated windscreen wipers, and that's all partly because lots of Subarus end up in cold parts of North America. And other standard equipment includes adaptive cruise control and this digital rear view mirror where if you flip this switch it becomes a screen to go with the reversing camera you get a standard as well so that means there are two cameras at the back and there's also a washer back there to mean that they won't get covered in muck and impossible to use if you go for the range topping touring model then as well as the 20 inch alloys that we spoke about earlier you get leather seats you get electric adjustment for the passenger seat and you get the panoramic sunroof as well so that is everything we know about the Subaru Solterra. But what do you think of this all new EV? Tell us in the comments below. And if you want to see our review of the car as soon as we've driven it, then make sure you're subscribed to our channel and you can see all of our other new car reviews as well. And if you're looking for a new car, then don't forget to make sure you're paying the right price and to get a great deal, go to whatcar.com.